first of all, I would like to welcome all of you, our dear seminary personnel, especially those in charge of uh, pastoral formation in our major seminaries, to this uh, convention, to this uh, Congress. And I would like to thank also uh, Bishop Milo Vergara, our chair. No, uh, he heads the uh, Commission on Seminaries for organizing this and for inviting me. Kaya lang po mga kaibigan, mga kapatid, ako po ay naatasan na pumunta sa Synod of Bishops. Kaya po uh, hindi nyo ako makakasama in person. Pero salamat na lang po sa teknolohiya ay uh, po pwede palang magkaganito na maging kapiling pa rin kayo sa pamamagitan ng isang taped message at uh, baka mas maganda pa nga at kaaya-ayang tingnan ang uh, taped kaysa sa personal na po. Ito po, my task is uh, to introduce the uh, chapter of the updated Philippine program of priestly formation devoted to the pastoral formation of the seminarians. I would really encourage you to read the text of this uh, booklet and uh, you will discover many, many valuable things in this uh, portion. And uh, one thing I uh, like about the way this uh, whole booklet has been written is it gives us general orientations based on Vatican II, PCP II, Pastores Dabo Vobis, while also leaving enough room for each diocese and each seminary to exercise their creativity and to respond to their particular needs, bearing with them also their unique traditions. Now, the pastoral formation of uh, seminarians occupies a uh, a big portion here. It is the fifth part of the UPPPF. And uh, in a way, it, uh, it is the climax of this uh, booklet, uh, this booklet's presentation of the different aspects of formation. Now, I have five uh, portions to the sharing which correspond to the five sections of the uh, booklet. Now, as I said, there is no substitute to reading the text. My role is to alert you to important uh, elements of this portion on pastoral formation. The first part of my sharing is trying to understand pastoral formation according to the updated program. What is pastoral formation? What does it contain? When we're talking about pastoral formation, what enters your minds? Here are some proposals. First, the whole of seminary formation has a fundamentally pastoral character. That is affirmed by our updated program. Optatam Totius of Vatican II already told us that the whole thrust of seminary formation is to make the seminarians true shepherds of souls after the example of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. So, making or training or preparing the seminarians to become pastors of souls, this is the very rationale of our seminary and seminary formation. Now, Pope John Paul II in Pastores Dabo Vobis rephrases it by saying that pastoral formation unifies and gives specificity to the whole formation of future priests. In other words, pastoral formation as the goal hmm, of seminary uh, training gives unity to all the other aspects of formation because the goal is to produce future priests, future pastors, and it gives specificity to our formation program. In other words, preparing future pastors makes our formation program 
really seminary pro, uh, formation. Kasi po kung minsan, baka mamaya, ha, ang ating formation program na ay uh, hindi na pala nagiging paghahanda para sa magiging mga pastol o pari sa kinabukasan. Baka mamaya, eh, ang atin ng mga seminary ay uh, 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 training ground para sa mga magiging kontratista, magiging artista. Huh? Eh, hindi na yan ang specificity, hindi na yan ang intelligibility of seminary formation. How do you know that you are still a, a real seminary? Check your pastoral formation. Whether you are still there to produce future pastors and good pastors. Ha? So yan ang unang punto. Ang ikalawang punto po ay, very clearly, pastoral formation has a Christological focus. Pastoral formation aims at making the the seminarian appropriate Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, as his model. So, pastoral formation is really communion with Christ and communion with his pastoral charity. It is imbibing the very spirit of the pastoral love that is in Jesus Christ. So here you can already see the connection between pastoral formation and spiritual formation. They are not against each other. In fact, spiritual formation is also pastoral in the sense that it forms the seminarian into the mind and heart of Jesus, the good shepherd, the model shepherd. Now, because of that, the word pastoral, my dear uh, fellow formators, the word pastoral should not be associated only with work, with tasks. Of course, there are tasks and works involved in pastoral formation and even in pastoral life itself. But given the whole context, we realize that being pastoral is not a matter of learning skills in order to do uh, some tasks adequately. Pastoral is really who we are, what we become. Are we becoming more and more like Christ, the Good Shepherd? Am I putting on the mind and the heart of Christ? Those are pastoral questions. And please, without this mind and heart, you may find someone who is very active in the works or in tasks or ministries, but he might be doing all of those not as a pastor. So, hindi lamang ito, ginagawa ko naman yung aking mga gampanin. Ang tanong pa rin ay, anong isip at kalooban ang daladala mo sa paggawa ng gampanin yan? Isip at puso ba ni Kristo na mabuting pastol? O baka hindi yon. Kung hindi yon, then I am not behaving as a pastor even if I am very busy you know, and faithful to the tasks. So it is not tasks against interiority. They always come together in what we call pastoral formation. The third po uh, point in this first portion is the ecclesiological, missiological, and presbyteral aspect of pastoral formation. Pastoral formation immerses the seminarian in the heart of the church, the church that must be served by pastors, and the church that produces and discerns the uh, calling to being pastors. So part of pastoral formation is really getting to know the church and being part of the church. And if we are part of the church, then pastoral formation also forms in the seminarians a missionary uh, mind, a missionary desire for the church's core, or what they call the raison d'etre of the church, is mission, evangelization. So if I am immersed in the church, I should be mission-oriented. And uh, here in the Philippines, it is not just mission in Philippine society, but mission even outside of the Philippines, uh, beginning with Asia, 
and maybe even the rest of the world. But part of immersion in the church and in mission, then we are also immersed in the cultures of this time, the world of this time, all of them bringing us to the question, how do, be, how do I become a good shepherd? How do I become a good pastor in the midst of all of this? The church, its traditions, the mission of the church, and the evolving times. Paano ako magiging mabuting pari na tumutulad kay Jesus sa ganitong konteksto? So, yan ho ang unang bahagi. Sana po linawi natin sa ating isip ano nga ba ang pastoral formation. At yung mga puntong yon sana po ay makatulong. Pumunta na po tayo sa ikalawang bahagi. Some aspects of pastoral formation. The updated program of, uh, of priestly formation follows the triple office of Jesus Christ. The Good Shepherd, the Munera, the uh, Ministry of the Word, the Ministry of Sanctification, and the Ministry of Shepherding. And so those three would now provide the, uh, in a way, the, the skeleton, the matrix for any pastoral formation program that we would like to formulate in the seminaries. So first, the ministry of the word. B very plainly, pastoral formation in the seminary is training in the future ministry of the word. But this training in the ministry of the word means that we should uh, root our seminarians in the word of God, in scriptures, in tradition, in theology, so we can see that uh, pastoral formation in the area of ministry of the word is closely connected to the intellectual, the philosophical, and theological training of the seminarians. Of course, they should always be contextualized and inculturated. Now, this would include, for example, initiation into the catechetical ministry of the church in its different forms, it uh, could uh, also include uh, involvement in Bible sharing, in Bible uh, study, uh, preparing them uh, in uh, how to deliver or prepare and de deliver good homilies, that's, uh, homiletics classes, or uh, BECs, immersions, because there in the BECs, we have uh, a vibrant Bible apostolate. No? And, and so uh, the... the Pa the pastoral formation program in the area of ministry of the word could uh, be done in collaboration with many lay people who are already involved in the ministry of the word, like catechists, BEC coordinators, lectors and commentators, and the like. Now, the second aspect is the ministry of sanctification, the ministry of worship. Now, the seminarians are to be guided or trained in guiding and leading people in personal and communal prayer, especially liturgical and sacramental actions. So here, the liturgical and sacramental life of the seminary plays a big role in the pastoral training of the seminarians. Their experience in liturgy, prayer, and uh, in sacraments in the places or parishes where they are serving also is quite important. So here, we might ask the seminarians to get involved in the planning and execution of parish liturgies. They may, may be initiated into the life of prayer groups, the charismatic groups, the covenant communities, we might guide them in giving recollections. We might initiate them into popular religiosity and spiritual direction. Ho? Yung mga spiritual director sa inyong paggabay sa ating mga seminarista sa buhay panalangin, 
Yan po ay paghahanda nila, hindi lamang para sa sariling kabanalan, kundi para sila ay maging gabay sa mga taong maghahangad din na sumunod kay Kristo sa isang malalim na buhay pananalangin. Okay. So, uh, uh, working with liturgical commissions who train uh, uh, sacramental uh, ministers is also important here. And the third aspect, the ministry of shepherding. This is training in community service. Now, there are various, various sectors that need service on the part of the church. Mga magsasaka, mangingisda, urban poor, kababaihan, indigenous peoples, mga bata, the street children, now, all of these, the, uh, the, the government officials, public servants, those in business, no? lahat po yan, nangangailangan ng paggabay ng ating mga pastol. And pastoral formation, sana, no? could initiate our seminarians into these various sectors in need of pastoral guidance. And here, uh, maybe the seminarians could be given specialized training. For example, ministering to people with disabilities. Now, that requires specialized training, sign language, no? or uh, uh, voters' education, the ministry towards good governance that will require a lot of specialized training, for example, in the, the laws of the land, paralegal assistance, and all of that. Now, parish exposure is essential because the parish still remains as the main locus for different forms of shepherding people. So, hindi po natin maaalis ang uh, pagpunta ng mga seminarista, sa iba't ibang mga parokya, makita ang buhay, regular na buhay ng isang pastol kapiling ang kanyang kawan sa mga parokya. Pero kasama rin po sana ang training sa community building, community organizing, formation of the lay, most especially social action na po, Church of the Poor, kasama po lahat yan. Uh, at sa lahat-lahat pong ito, lalo na dito sa Ministry of Shepherding, I am appealing to you, dear formators, that part of this uh, training or preparation for the Ministry of Shepherding is the purification of the motivation. So please pay attention in pastoral formation. Pay attention to the attitudes of the seminarians towards authority and power. Kasi po, Baka balang araw, pag sila na ay pastol at sila na ang may hawak ng otoridad at kapangyarihan sa simbahan, baka hindi gamitin sa tamang paraan ang kanilang kapangyarihan. So part of pastoral formation is our attentiveness to that. Does this seminarian have an authority hang-up? Does this seminarian have uh, some sort of a fascination for authority? No? Minsan may mga seminarista na batang-bata pa, authoritarian na, mas daig pa ang rektor sa seminaryo. Lording it over other seminarians when they are given uh, uh, positions of uh, responsibility in the seminary. Pero inyo kung minsan, oh, siya lang naman na yung tagapamahala ng gardening. Akala mo kung sino ng diktador. Now, pastoral formation must address that. Kung sa gardening pa lang, diktador na. Pag naging parish priest yan, nako, baka masahol pa yan sa mga ibang uh, uh, ubispo o pati papa. No? Baka gawin niya yung kanyang garden ha, bilang Vatican na. No? Hmm, masahol pa. Ha, so, babantayan po yan. So, hindi lamang yung, did you do your work? No? Uh, but the how, the how is equally important, if not more important. Tignan din po ninyo dito sa pastoral ministry, uh, yung ministry of shepherding, kung kaya nila mag-collaborate. No? O, hindi lang diktador, ano pa? Inaangkin na lahat. No? And there is no capacity to recognize the gifts of other people 
and to develop those gifts. These are, all, these are all part of the ministry of shepherding, which we should be attentive to. No? Uh, not only when the seminarians are in their, past, in their apostolate areas, but even in the seminary. How do they handle their ministries and tasks, responsibilities in the seminary? Kaya yung mga prefect of discipline, prefect of students, mahalaga rin ang papel ninyo dito sa pastoral formation. Now, let me go to the third part. Some specific areas indicated by our updated program uh -huh, in the area of pastoral formation. Ilang bagay lang po ito. First, the seminary formation team. Uh, the priests involved the religious and the lay people. Please uh, listen carefully. The pastoral formation of the seminarians is the concern of the whole team and not just the concern of the pastoral director. As I have been uh, uh, stressing so far, you could see that pastoral formation geared towards preparing the seminarians to be good pastors in the future. No, this, this area involves the academic, the human, the spiritual, and the communitarian dimensions of uh, seminary formation. So, uh, for those in charge of human formation, sana po, through counseling, through all the programs in human formation, we should be clear about the pastoral attitudes and values that we should already be instilling in seminarians in our human formation program. Pakibantayan po ninyo ho, baka meron kayong mga module-module in human formation na na i-intensify yan, na baka, baka lalong napapalalim yung kayabangan, I am my own master type of, of uh, human. No, no? Nobody can dictate on me, I am my own Lord. Naku, kapag ang human formation ganun, eh, sira na ang pastoral formation. Sa intellectual formation, the professors, not that you will rush into so-called, uh, in the area of, of the so-called pastoral application, but even in your seemingly speculative and historical presentations, you must be aware and you must consciously lead all of those discussions into pastoral fruitfulness for the seminarians. Those in charge of community life, tignan ninyo how the, the formation of the community and the involvement of seminarians in the formation of a true community in the seminary is already a preparation for them to form future communities of faith in their assignments, especially in the parishes. So, wag po tayo magtuturuan. Wag nating sasabihin, responsibilidad lang yan ng pastoral director. Lahat po na nasa seminary, nagtutulong-tulong towards the pastoral formation of our seminarians. Second point po, yung rector. Hmm. Yung rector po ang pinaka-pastor no? of the seminary community, which according to uh, Pope John Paul II, is a church community. Seminary living should be an experience of ecclesial living. And so in this little church called the seminary, the rector is supposed to be the model of being a pastor. So even if the rector does not give explicit talks about pastoral formation, the way he runs the seminary, the way he relates to the seminarians, his fellow formators, the staff, most especially, you know, the rector becomes a symbol of what a pastor is. So, sa mga rektor po, no, sa inyong ginagawa, sa sinasabi ninyo, at sa inyong pakikitungo, pakikiugnay sa lahat, marami silang napipick up, napupulot kung paano maging pastol. Balang araw po, yung mga seminarista na tingala ng tingala sa inyo, gagayahin kayo, kaya sana gayahin na yung pinaka maganda na pagiging pastol. At wag <laughs> magaya yung mga hindi dapat gayahin. Pero 
They have no choice. Since they live with you and they see you all the time, they somehow imbibe your being pastor for better or for worse. And uh, that, is, that applies also to the other members of the pastoral team. The third point po is the pastoral uh, director. Na po. Uh, the main task of the pastoral director is to formulate and even propose with the help of the team you know, uh, a program for training and formation in ministry. Pero pakiusap po sa mga pastoral directors, please consciously make your programs integrated with the human, intellectual, spiritual, and communitarian aspects of formation. Huwag po natin niyang pag-aaway-awayin at pag walayin. In fact, I would appreciate it if your template for pastoral uh, evaluation, no? evaluating the pastoral performance of the seminarians sh could include those. No? Sa kanyang assignment, ano ang nakikita natin na dapat niyang palaguin on the human aspect of formation? Sa kanyang, uh, ano, sa kanyang involvement in a ministry or parish, ano ang lumalabas na dapat niyang ayusin dito sa intellectual formation and down the line? Huh? So, pastoral evaluation must feed the other aspects of formation with valuable data. At uh, pakiusap din lang sa mga uh, pastoral directors, when you formulate your programs, please be attentive to pedagogy. Please be attentive to the stages of formation and the capacities of seminarians. Huwag nyo namang ia-assign ang isang uh, nagsisimula pa lamang sa Bible, uh, scriptural studies in the seminary na sila agad ang magbibigay ng halimbawa ng training para sa mga biblical apostolate groups in the parishes. Baka hindi pa nila kaya yun, no? Uh, baka ipasa yan sa mga medyo advanced na in uh, biblical studies. Huh? And finally, the diocesan family. The bishop, the priests, the religious, and the laity in the dioceses where the seminaries are. The bishop, and I'm, I'm one, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, uh, I am uh, speaking no, to myself too when I say this, that the bishop as the major, the main pastor, of a diocese, a particular church, he should mirror to the seminarians the ideals of a good pastor, a good shepherd after the, the image of Jesus Christ. And it is incumbent upon the bishop to make the seminarians aware of the pressing pastoral concerns of their dioceses. And by the way the bishop handles the diocesan family, the seminarians hopefully will learn valuable lessons about how, uh, lessons on how to be a good pastor, a good. So the bishops are involved in the pastoral formation of the seminarians, not only occasionally, no, when his attention or his presence no, uh, is called forth in some programs, but his being a bishop, his witness to being a good shepherd no, to the flock is already a contribution to the pastoral formation of seminarians. But not only the bishop, also the priests of the diocese. I am appealing to all the priests and you seminary formators, maybe you can make the priests of the dioceses, especially those who are not formally involved in seminary formation, make them aware that they have a role to play in the pastoral formation of seminarians. Halimbawa po, no? minsan tinuturuan natin ang mga seminarista, mag-aral kayong mabuti kasi yung pag-aaral ninyo makakatulong sa paggabay ninyo sa mga tao. Pero kapag kahalimbawa, summer apostolate, Christmas apostolate, o kaya kahit weekend apostolate, 
Kapag nakikita naman ng mga seminarista yung mga parish priest o yung mga assistant na hindi nagbabasa, hindi nag-aaral, baka iisipin ng seminarista, habang seminarista ako, mag-aaral ako, pagkatapos nito, pwede na pala hindi. Tignan mo yung mga pare, hindi na naman nag-aaral. No? So, baka itong mga parish priests no, and their assistants will undo what the seminary is trying to build up. No? O sa seminaryo, sabi natin, simple living ha, hinihigpitan natin ng hawak ng pera. Pero baka naman nakikita nila sa ibang pare no? na huh, spending galore. No? Yung ganun. So, the whole diocesan presbyterium must be aware that they are influencing the future type or form of shepherding no? uh, through the witness or lack of witness that they give to our seminarians. And the religious and the laity. Sana po, no? uh, the religious, through your radical living of your baptismal promises, you can challenge the seminarians to serve purely without any ambitions for power. And the laity, especially those involved in various ministries in the church, do not, sinasabi ko po lagi, do not spoil the seminarians. Love them, but do not spoil them. Observe boundary. Sometimes you are you you are so uh, so um, given to to caring for them that you are already go. You are not anymore helping them. You are already forming in them wrong values. Okay. Ah, uh, minsan tinuturo maging simple pero yun naman pala. Yung mga nanay-nanay, tatay-tatay, mga ate-ate, kuya-kuya sa mga parokya. Nako, kung magbigay naman pala. Kaya pala itong seminarista, bata pa, aba, iba na ang taste. Ha? Na? At uh, parang uh, hindi mo na po, hindi na, na, hindi na naayos yung ugnayan sa mga dukha, sa mga simpleng tao kasi masyado nang umangat. Ang kanyang, ang kanyang standards. Eh, bakit? Eh, kasi na-spoil na rin minsan ng mga nagmamahal na mga tatay-tatay at nanay-nanay. So, let us make uh, our religious and lay people more aware that they are part of the formation team, that they should not deform our seminarians by uncritically loving them. Oh, nandito na ako sa final portion, hindi pala limang sections, apat lang pala. No? And this is the last. So uh, after dealing with understanding uh, the, what pastoral formation means, uh, we went to uh, some aspects of, uh, the, the, uh, of pastoral formation based on the triple uh, office of ministry of the word, ministry of um, sanctification and worship, and the ministry of shepherding. Then we went to some uh, areas, you know, like uh, the role of the whole uh, team of formators, then the role of the rector, and the role also of the whole uh, diocese, of course, the pastoral director. Now, we go to the formation program itself. The uh, updated program of Philippine, uh, 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 the program for Philippine uh, formation no, does not propose one model. In fact, we say that there are or there have been various models of pastoral formation of seminarians. And uh, the seminaries and the dioceses are free to uh, formulate their own programs based on two principles, which I already said a while ago. First is uh, the pastoral formation program must always bear in mind that it initiates the seminarian into the realities of shepherding, the realities that are involved in making him a future shepherd. And secondly, the program, whatever it may be, should take into consideration the stages of development and formation of the seminarians themselves. There is a certain gradualness 
into the uh, initiation process into, uh, uh, towards uh, pastoral formation. But let me indicate, based on the program, a few items. First, uh, since pastoral formation would deal with preparing seminarians also for specialized ministries in the future, you know, and uh, sending them even now to various sectors of society, maybe the seminary could work closely with existing diocesan commissions or ministries. Aside from saving the seminary, you know, the time, the resource also of formulating their own programs, maybe the dioceses already have existing programs with, uh, with which the seminaries could link. And there, the pastoral director could be the conduit. And there is another advantage to it. We can involve the religious and the lay people and the diocesan priests working in those commissions and ministries in the formation of seminarians in these specific areas. Now, this is a proposal, a closer link between the pastoral formation program of the seminary and the existing commissions and ministries of the dioceses. Another suggestion, mission uh, orientation and even uh, exposure to actual mission realities. First, locally, uh, exposure to poor communities, exposure to the unchurched, even exposure to communities that are not always friendly to the church. Another suggestion is exposure, mission exposure to dioceses other than the dioceses where the seminarians will serve as priests. For example, it might benefit uh, uh, seminarians from Manila to have some mission exposure uh, in dioceses in the Visayas and in Mindanao, because for life they will be serving in, uh, in Luzon. No? So it might be good that they, at an early stage, they get some ideas no? and experience of mission in other dioceses and vice versa. Okay? So mission. And we should prepare consciously our seminarians for future mission outside of the country. We already are seeing the signs. Here in the Philippines, many Asian churches are sending seminarians and sending religious to be formed here. And we see also uh, the need of our neighboring countries in Asia and even as far as Europe and the States for ordained ministers and religious who could serve them. No? In, uh, on, a, on a maybe limited uh, basis. And so we cannot anymore close our eyes to the calling, uh, the call of mission abroad. No? So we should prepare for that too. A third uh, suggestion is <laughs> pastoral formation should include more strongly the spirit of collaboration. Uh, pastors cannot be lone rangers anymore. They should learn how to work with fellow priests. They should learn to work with their bishops. And they should learn to work with religious and the lay people in a church called communion. Now, this is not just to make life easy for us. It is not just for division of labor. This is rooted in the very nature of the church as communio, communion. So the pastoral approach should also be communion. How come the church is communion, but the style of working is not communion? So this is a pastoral concern nowadays, and so that must be addressed in the seminaries too. Pastoral formation should include formation in collaboration with fellow ministers, both ordained and non-ordained, but with a proviso. Let us teach the seminarians true collaboration and not 
just developing cliques. Cliques with their subcultures. Sometimes in the seminaries, cliques are formed. And later on, even as ordained, they maintain the cliques. And they know how to work with one another as priests only with those members of the cliques. And later on, they become power blocks that impede the pastoral effectivity of the whole presbyterium and even the whole diocese. And very sad to say also, some of these cliques are not only <laughs> are not used to <laughs> collaborate with one another, no, priests collaborating with one another in ministry. Sometimes the cliques become collaborations, also occasions to collaborate on vices. No? And they protect one another instead of challenging one another. Instead of leading one another into the right path, the members of the group sometimes become the catalyst for the downfall of each one. And that is very uh, contrary to pastoral formation. I, I, uh, I am appealing to you, please, uh, let us set up mechanisms, both interior, in the mind and heart, and exterior, to address this. How do we uh, teach them to collaborate without collaboration being used for subcultures, cliques, no? uh, that become protective of, of the companions rather than prophetic towards their friends and collaborators. Another aspect you know, in the program, and this the spiritual directors would help, is uh, in the area of motivational purity. We already talked about this. You know, the world, the church, uh, we all need the witness of humble, sincere, and simple leaders especially in the church. So the motivation needs to be uh, clarified. If you see traces of uh, greed uh, or uh, uh, desire for power, check them right away. They are the most unpastoral <laughs> values that a seminarian could carry to ordination. Another is the pastoral year or the SPFY. Many seminaries have already adopted this as a separate year now. And uh, so this might call for uh, uh, a review. Uh, what are the gains? What have we uh, learned from the faults even or the deficiencies in the past so that the SPFY or the PY or whatever you want to call it could be a viable, and, uh, could be a, a, a real contribution to the for formation of the seminarians. I know for a fact that many seminarians and many young priests look back to the pastoral year, the spiritual pastoral formation year, as one of the highlights or high points of their formation. And finally, uh, there might be a need for a year or a moment of transition from seminary life to ordination. Uh, those seminaries who hold ordinations to the diaconate within the formation year, maybe you should look into this. There is a, a, a jump no, from being a seminarian to being ordained. And I don't know whether we are handling very well the transition. Some dioceses and seminaries have already instituted some form of a, of, a, of a program that will equip seminarians to say goodbye to a seminary, seminary culture and mentality and to welcome them to a life of ministry. That can very well serve as a pre-diaconal program so that what they have learned in theology, what they have heard uh, in their human and spiritual formation, what they have experimented in in their community life as seminarians, what they have touched upon even superficially in their apostolic exposures as seminarians would somehow be brought into an integrated moment, an integrative moment as a preparation for ordination. Now, those are some things that are already contained here in this book which I elaborated on. 
So, uh, and I offer them to you so that when you read the book again, you could pay attention to some of these things. And I, as I said, I have added also some uh, reflections or some questions or challenges so that based on this book, you could creatively uh, reflect on a viable and effective pastoral formation program for our seminarians in the Philippines. So maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig, sa inyong uh, uh, pagtitiyaga. Uh, sana po hindi ako masyadong napakabilis. Uh, sana naman ay uh, naunawaan ninyo ng kahit papaano. At nagpapasalamat din ako sa inyo sa inyong pag-aalay ng sarili sa seminary ministry. Ako po ay tatlong taon na naging formator. Kung minsan napapaisip ako kung uh, ito nga ba ay uh, kapaki-pakinabang o hindi. Pero ngayon po, masasabi ko, no? Being a seminary formator does not only equip me to help seminarians to become good pastors. The seminary ministry has uh, definitely equipped me to be a good pastor. At least the good part of me that is trying to be a good pastor. So, marami salamat po muli and uh, have a good, good Congress.